Hi everyone, I'm David Ainsworth, uh, Head of Communications at the United Nations Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity. We're here in Geneva uh, talking about the intimate relationship between agriculture and biodiversity. We're joined by Irena Hoffman of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Irena, good to have you on board. Thank you very much, David. So in our interview today, we're going to talk a little bit about the role of uh, and contributions of the Food and Agriculture Organization and also the uh, Commission uh, of Genetic Resources of the Food and Agriculture Organization. So first of all, Irena, you're the lead of the work stream of the FAO uh, on biodiversity uh, in particular. The FAO developed a strategy for mainstreaming biodiversity across action, uh, agricultural sectors and also an action plan. Given that mainstreaming is an important part of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, can you tell us how that action plan can contribute to the framework? Yeah, of course I can. Mm. So this action plan was in fact um, developed after the COP13 in okay. Cancun. And it um, demonstrates the increased engagement in all FAO bodies and its membership in the topic of biodiversity mainstreaming. Of course, FAO has a long, long history on working on different issues related to biodiversity, but to call it mainstreaming and to really have it across all the bodies is something that has developed over these past few years. And this strategy on mainstreaming biodiversity across agricultural sectors and agriculture for FAO is crop, livestock agriculture, forestry, fisheries, aquaculture. So everything that contributes to food and agriculture production. So it, this strategy aims at doing this biodiversity mainstreaming across all these sectors in a consistent, coherent and structured way. It's in principle a document for FAO mm -hmm. to show its commitment towards its members to support the members upon their request on all kinds of work related to country action on biodiversity. And there is a strong commitment also to support the implementation of the post-2020 biodiversity framework once it's adopted. Are some of the principles that you've got in the action plan, do you already see them in the framework or are those things that need to be further developed in this draft? I think there are uh, strong linkages to the long-term approach to mainstreaming okay. where our strategy is referenced to. And um, I think the, um, the, the element of sustainable use mm. of these linkages the between biodiversity and agriculture, the two of which completely depend on each other. You cannot have healthy food without a healthy environment. That, I think, could be still strengthened in the post-2020 framework um, in the, all the, the targets on benefits to people. Okay, that's great. So now, okay, you came up, or FAO, came up with the State of the World's Biodiversity for Food and Agriculture. The 2019 report um, was a little bit alarming. It re re revealed alarming trends in the decline of species and ecosystems that underpin all of our agriculture and food systems. So from what I understand, the commission that you're heading, uh, the Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, um, uh, negotiated what's called the Framework for Action on biodiversity for food and agriculture. So could you talk a little bit about this framework? And in particular, what we want to know is, how is this framework potentially able to contribute to the post-2020 global biodiversity framework? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> so this framework um, is, as I said, it's a policy response to this state of the world yeah. on biodiversity for food and agriculture. And it looks um, at bringing together and having a consistent and coherent approach that encompasses all the existing global plans of action, but takes a specific focus then on the things that have not yet been covered, mm -hmm. which is what we call associated biodiversity, which is all the organisms that provide ecosystem services, such as the pollinators, biological control, soil biodiversity, and so on, and wild foods. And it stresses 
the integrated management of the biodiversity that underpins agriculture in and around the production system. So it looks at um, it, all the components that you need for the, the food system transition towards more sustainable food systems and it's explicitly meant as a contribution to the post-2020 framework. So it's in principle the, the one of the blocks that the agriculture co community sort of gives to the CBD community as a tool that can be used for national implementation on everything that is related to biodiversity for food and agriculture. has many linkages to topics that are currently included in the post-2020 framework, such as target 10, target 7, but also other targets and goals. And the focus is very clear on, on the, this integrated sustainable use component. So, the framework uh, for action on biodiversity was recently introduced to the process. The document is under, under consideration uh, as part of the work here. It's an information document. What are your expectations about the use of this framework for action by the delegates here and in the process going forward? When the FAO developed this framework, there was um, an offer to the negotiators of the uh, CBD process to use the framework and to make decisions based on the elements of the framework. There is sometimes language that could potentially be used. There could also be a reference of the entire framework as one of those supporting the um, biodiversity for food and agriculture elements of the framework. Um, as part of mainstreaming, as part of all the other um, conventions and, and agreements that do support the um, post-2020 framework. Because it's very clear from the, the discussion so far that the framework, post-2020 global biodiversity framework, should be a framework for all sectors of society and the agricultural sectors are crucially important. Great. Well, thank you very much. So the uh, FAO of the United Nations System and the Commission, very important partners uh, in this work on the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. So thank you, Irene, for talking about the contribution of the FAO, and we look forward to seeing us working together, the FAO and the Commission, as we implement this agreement to come. We are very willing to do so. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again soon for another Biodiversity Beat interview.